Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we began the prophecy, we picked up some equipment, and now we're pretty much ready to take on Garland and rescue the princess. However, even if you're a seasoned veteran, I definitely recommend doing a little bit of grinding in this area. At least get your first level up, because the stat increases will make the upcoming boss battle a lot easier. Uh, other than that, the gold you'll gain from the random encounters will let you pick up any equipment that you couldn't afford before, and more importantly, any spells that you still wanted to buy. I'm going to forego any grinding at this point, just because I'm feeling like my team is pretty good, it's pretty solid, it's a good looking bunch if I do say so myself, and I'm pretty confident that the upcoming boss battle won't be too difficult for me. Uh, I kind of know what to expect, so I feel I can forego it at this point. If you'll remember the one NPC in the castle there mentioned that Garland is hiding out in a castle to the northwest, so let's head in that direction. Uh, it's a linear path, you can't really get lost, but that being said, when I was 4 years old, I always referred to this as the fish forest, just because if you look at it, it kinda looks like a fish. Yeah. And my hair kinda makes it look like a little fish eye. And you can see the little fin up there, and like the little dorsal fin, but yeah. You really can't get lost. Because as you can see, if you come up here, we're already at the castle, and there's nowhere else you can go, so... You don't really need landmarks at this point, but that's something I'm always going to remember. Kind of that useless four-year-old tidbit that will always live on in my memory. As you can see, there's a room in the middle here. That is where Garland's waiting for us, but there's actually a room in each of the corners. Uh, the two on the right we can't get to just yet without a certain key item, so we'll forget about those. But the two on the left we can go into, and they actually have some treasure that could be pretty useful. So let's head in that direction. And we have a new enemy, the Wolf. This enemy is slightly stronger than the Imp. Whoa, 50 hit to critical damage, oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. Uh, the one kind of bad thing about them is that they tend to appear in groups. As you can see, there's six of them. Don't be surprised if you come across them in like groups of nine. And it can be pretty annoying early on, especially when you don't have a whole lot of hit points and their little attacks can add up. Uh, don't be afraid to heal if you need to. I think I might have to. Ooh, even eight damage on hope. That's not good. Uh, they're pretty weak. You should be able to take them out in you know, one or two hits, depending on what character you have. Uh, just try to split up your damage so that you can get them out quickly. Uh, I think I should be okay, actually. I'm taking another risk here. I shouldn't do that, especially because of critical hit. But I'm kind of counting on the fact that early on, a lot of your hits and a lot of the enemy hits will be missing. Which I've kind of touched on briefly, but... Yeah, if you can take them out quicker than slower, then definitely a bonus. Which, you know, you can be said for any battle, really. And... okay, good. Phew survive that. So not too bad. One of the good things about fighting large groups of enemies is that you get a lot of experience points. As you can see, 36 points, and it's actually enough to gain us our first level. And at this point, I'm going to point out that each level, it'll show you your increase in hit points, it'll also show you the individual stats that you gain, but uh, in the game code, the levels are kind of scripted to either be a strong level or a weak level. And what I mean by this is that a strong level will give you a lot of hit points, or, you know, maybe 20 to 30 hit points depending on the character, whereas a weak level you'll only gain about 1 to 6 hit points, which is, you know, nothing really. So that's why I really recommend gaining that first level before coming here, because it's obviously a strong level. I don't know what levels are strong and weak off by heart, I'm sure you could look it up online. I don't know if it differs for each character, but... Uh, I just kind of accept them as they come, they're definitely a nice bonus, they make things a lot easier. And we have another new enemy. These are the spiders, they can kind of hit pretty hard, but they also take damage equally as well, or equally as bad. It's easy to do a lot of damage against them, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, you don't have to worry about them poisoning you at this point, their later counterparts can poison you with their physical attacks, but I mean, as you can see, these things are easy to hit, easy to do a lot of damage to, and you can take them out pretty quickly. And they give decent experience points too. And if we come down here into the first room, we will find a cap, which is a sort of a helmet. You want to give it to your fighter at this point, or your uh, main tanking character. It only increases your absorb by one or so, but really, anything at this point is useful. It won't make that much of a difference later on, but for now, one absorb is pretty critical. If we come up over here, in this top room, there's actually two treasure chests, the first of which contains a heal potion, which is pretty useful, 
and this one contains a cabin, which we can use on the field and restore 60 hit points to all our characters, and more importantly, make a save point. These items are really useful if you're, you know, far away from a town, and you realize everyone's gonna die, and you don't wanna lose any progress, just pop one down, and you can make a save point. If we come in here, Garland is waiting for us. I'm gonna heal up, don't be afraid to use your spell charges at this point. I'm gonna heal Hope, just cause I feel like she might take a hit and die, and that would not be good. I'm gonna use my heal potion on Pancake. And uh, it heals for 30 or so, which is pretty good. Uh, later on, you definitely want to stock up on one of those. They're really useful early on, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like we can take this boss down. So, let's have at her. Him, rather. But with a name like Garland, how can you tell? Honestly, who would name their child Garland? Isn't that like a Christmas decoration? It's like the popcorn on the little bits of string. Yeah. Anyways, he wants to knock us all down, and I always have this image of him just kind of pushing us over, and then us sitting on the ground being like, what the hell, dude? Why why would you push us down? That kind of hurts. But we retaliate by killing him. And that's what I intend to do. Uh, with my red mage, I tend to use my fire spells just because magic has a really high hit percentage in this game, at least the damaging spells. I'm not sure if it's 100%. It actually might, it might be. Yeah. But uh, I'd rather have consistent damage than worry about missing. Though, oh my goodness, 54 damage. This battle will be over quicker than I thought. And Garland isn't too difficult, even at level 1 you can easily take him down with your fist if you wanted to. He only uses physical attacks, and he's dead already, wow, that was really quick. He only uses physical attacks, he doesn't have any spells or special abilities, but he does give us a shitload of gold, and oh my god, you stupid bat, get out of my way, get out of my way. If you talk to the princess, she'll thank you and she'll whisk you away back to the castle. And that pretty much concludes my let's play of Final Fantasy 1. I know it was really short, but I mean, you keep in mind, this game was made in the, the, the late 80s, it was the first RPG pretty much of its time, and uh, yeah, this game was huge. This is pretty much where all the other Final Fantasies came from, and I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did, and uh, I hope to see you in my next Let's Play. But until then, my name is Paper Napkin, take it easy folks. Ho ho, how many of you did I fool? I definitely tried to pull an ex-Jeffer there. Yes, ex-Jeffer, I know you like to do this. Now it's my turn. Ho 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 ho. Anyways, for defeating Garland, if we talk to the king, he'll thank us. He'll actually order a bridge to be built. Which is, you know, that's pretty cool. Bridges are pretty expensive, especially, you know, in medieval days. Uh, if you talk to the princess, she'll give us a loot. Which won't be very useful until way, 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 way later on in the game. My first playthrough, I actually forgot to get it from her. And then I got to that point, and then I was like, well, what the hell do I have to do now? And this was before the internet, before we could look it up and, you know, game facts, find out what's going on, but, uh, eventually I did figure it out after talking to my friend's dad, who played this game a lot, but, uh, you'll see when we get there. Uh, there are a couple of rooms in here that I didn't go to in this castle, just because they are locked. We can't get to the, uh, the treasure inside, spoiler, spoiler, until later on, but, uh, if you come over here, there's actually an invisible NPC, which is pretty funny. I don't know if it was a, a you know, an error in the code, they forgot to put the sprite in, but uh, they fixed that in the later versions of the game, but I think it's still fun to point out. So before continuing onwards, I'm going to go back to the town, I'm going to heal up, and um, how much money do I have? Should I buy some... Mm, no, I'm not going to buy any magic just yet, just because the next town over has some pretty good items that I want to get first. Uh, spoiler, spoiler, I like doing spoilers in this game, but uh, yeah. Hold off on your gold for now. You can grind for a lot if you want, but uh, later on, there are a couple better grinding areas. And as you can see, there's now a bridge here. This is the bridge that the king constructed, and if you step onto it... Ooh, look at these cinema graphics. It's so, so realistic. Look, there's birds. There's birds flying in the sky, and there's people walking. And this is kind of like the, I don't know, introduction to the main story, I guess. Pretty much were the Warriors of Light, and oh wow, look at that. This game was programmed by one guy. Nasser. Or maybe that's like a, a group, because I don't think that's a real name. Hmm, could explain all the bugs if it was just one person, but whatever. So, you know, kind of a weird place to put a little prelude, but we'll accept it. At this point, we come with our first fork in the road. Do we go right, or do we go north? I'm actually going to go north, just because... This is the way I usually go. And we have a new enemy. This is the Grey Imp. This is not really grey at all. It's kind of a bluish tint. I don't understand that name. But, uh... It is Grey Imp. I always thought it was 
greater imp, but it's not. If you look it up online in the bestiary, or if you actually bought the game itself, it came with like a giant um, map on one side, the bestiary on the second side. It actually says gray imp, so it is gray, even though it says it's blue in color, but I always come up over here just because there's forests, there's some lakes that we can't cross yet, but uh, there's a lot of new enemies up here, especially above these lakes, and these are a couple of them. Ogres and creeps, these are a lot harder than anything we face at this point. You want to take them out, don't be afraid to use magic. Uh, they can do pretty good damage, but they also give a lot of experience points and a lot of gold. So hopefully we can take them out pretty quickly. Uh, if you're level 1 at this point, which you can't be, because even if you don't fight anything on the way to Garland, Garland himself will give you experience points to level up. But, uh, yeah. Uh, take these guys out as fast as you can. They can hit pretty hard, though I don't think they've hit me yet. And they have a lot of hit points. And I guess this is the first point where we actually have an enemy that takes up more than one little square. And wow, they're actually hitting me pretty hard now. They've, I've made them mad. But uh, what you'll find is that some enemies will take up four spots, so then you can only fight you know, four of them at max. Uh, this is just because they're a lot stronger than the one-celled enemies. And later on you'll find that bosses, spoiler, spoiler again, will take up the whole screen, and they won't have any minions or whatnot with them. And this is actually going pretty well. Managing my hits pretty well, no one's missing. Blank air. And now we just have to worry about the ogre. I tend to focus on taking out all the weaker enemies first, just because their hits can add up over time, rather than focusing on the big guy. Just because, especially in this game, with the limited amount of you know heal charges you can have, healing is definitely... It's very important to have, and it's so important that you kind of want to be sparingly using it. It's kind of weird. You'd think you would use it as much as you can, but really, that's not the case. And four damage. Seriously, that's not good. Could use fire, I guess. Hmm. And I keep missing now. This is not good. Just end it. Come on, paper, end it. Ah, I'm gonna miss. I think I will just bust out a fire spell. Put this guy out of his misery. And as you can see, since we're now level 2, we do have a spell charge for level 2 spells, but uh, we don't have anything. 11 damage! That's it? That's kind of stupid. There we go, 18 to finish him off. But let's take a look at that experience points. 96 and 240 gold. And wow, that's enough to gain us a level. And it's another strong level for the fighter at least, so we got 20 hit points there. And it's a weak level for Lexa, so I guess it does depend on the, the, the class there, because that's a strong level for Pancake as well. And I'm guessing a weak level for Hope. Yeah. So yeah, it's strong and weak levels do depend on the class. And if you look them up online, you probably could find them. This is a great area to level up, to get a lot of gold, especially if you want to stockpile at this point. Because later on, you will definitely need a lot of gold. If you come into this cave here, there is a broom that's kind of walking around. Kind of a weird looking broom. But if you talk to it, it tells us to Sles Behashrup, a magic spell. Uh, I know you guys probably already realize this, but it actually says push B select, and if you do that on the field, I guess I'll show that first. Uh, yeah, I'll show it first, might as well. What was it? Push B select? What's my B button? That's not it. Oops. Well, this is a good point to point this out. If you push select, you can choose the order of your party members. And there we go. If you push B select on the main map, it'll bring up a map for you to see. You can't really move it around, but you can kind of see those little flashing dots. That indicates either a dungeon or a town or somewhere that you have to go at some point. Pretty useful if you get lost if you don't have the handout from the game itself, but uh, I don't think I'll be using it too often. Uh, if you come in here, you can actually walk on these. I always thought you couldn't, so you know, when I was younger I was like trying to maneuver my way over to the chest and I couldn't get there and then I stepped on it and I was like, oh, that's kind of stupid. But anyways, if you come over here, pick up some t chest, we find a pure potion, um, there's nothing there, we find a heal potion, and a heal potion. So not too bad, not too great, but I guess those guys would say the same thing. If you talk to her, she's looking for her crystal, because she's blind without it, and her name is Matoya, this is Matoya's cave. Welcome to Matoya's cave everyone, this is Matoya, she's very nice, but uh, she has a bit of an attitude sometimes. Uh, keep in mind of where her cave is, we will need to come back here later, spoiler spoiler, 
But uh, I felt the need to point it out, and I just really wanted those heal potions. But uh, I think this is a good place in the episode. Uh, in the next one, we're going to go to the next town over, and hopefully we'll pick up some new equipment, some new spells. Maybe we'll find out what the heck is going on in terms of those orbs that we have in our inventory. But until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.